I grew up in Egypt. I lived there for 11 years, but and nothing had prepared me for what I saw on February 11, when Mubarak finally fell. So I was extremely inspired. I was always the optimistic type, but I've never been as optimistic as I am now that we shall overcome. So, I wish you Egypt. I wish you empowerment to resist, to fight for social and economic justice, to win your freedom and equal rights. I wish you the will and skill to break out of your carefully concealed prison walls. In our part of the world, prison walls and thick, inviolable doors are all too overt, obvious, overbearing, choking, and this is why we remain restive, rebellious, agitated, and always in preparation for one day of freedom when we gather enough people power to cross all hitherto categoric red lines and to break through the thick, ugly, cold walls that have surrounded us for all our lives, like the smell of a rotting corpse in our claustrophobic prison cell. But your prison cells have virtual walls, hidden well, lest they evoke a will to resist. There is no door to your prison cell. You can roam about freely, never recognizing the much larger prison you're still confined to. I wish you Egypt, so you can decolonize your minds, for only then can you imagine real freedom, real social justice, real equal rights, and real dignity. I wish you Egypt, so you can tear up the paper with the multiple choice question, what do you want? For all the answers you are given are dead wrong, and your only choice then seems to be between evil and the lesser one. I wish you Egypt so you can, like the Tunisians, the Egyptians, the Libyans, the Bahrainis, and certainly the Palestinians, shout no. We do not want to select the least wrong answer. We want another alternative that is not on your list. Given the choice between slavery and death, we opt for freedom and dignified life. No slavery and no death. I wish you Egypt so that you can collectively, democratically and wisely rebuild your society, develop a constitution, it's about time. Reset the rules to serve the people, to end racism and discrimination of all sorts, to safeguard the environment, to cut wars and war crimes, not jobs and social services to invest in healthcare and education, not in fossil fuels and manufacturing weapons of death, to overthrow the authoritarian, tyrannical rule of multinationals, to end complicity in Israel's occupation, colonialism and apartheid by adopting BDS, to get the hell out of Afghanistan and stop the genocidal war, to fulfill this country's legal and moral obligation to help rebuild the economies of your devastated former colonies so that young men can find their own homelands livable and lovable again instead of risking death on the high seas to reach your shores giving up loved ones and the place they once called home our oppression and yours are deeply interconnected intertwined you see our joint struggle for universal rights and dignified living is not just a noble and compelling slogan that we gratify ourselves by raising. Our common struggle for true emancipation and self-determination is an idea whose time has vociferously arrived. After Egypt, it is our time. It's time for Palestinian freedom and self-determination, and it's time for the peoples of the earth to reassert our common humanity and reclaim our common destiny. Thank you.